It is the lifestyle. We sell the lifestyle. We promote the lifestyle. We're not sitting there talking about, uh, unless it's an engineer, unless it's a high C detail oriented guy, we'll explain to them the electrical cost of the pump. But nine out of 10 people don't even care about the electrical cost of the pump. If you're going to buy a Ferrari, you don't ask how much the fuel efficiency is. Unless you're an engineer and you want to know, then we'll tell you what the amperage draws of those pumps are and give you some options. There's a great video, and we're going to put it up on the Aquascape Academy page on Facebook with Scott Hammond, who is a late, great pond builder out of the state of Washington. And in 2006, Scott was at one of our trainings, Water Garden Excellence, and he was talking in Tony Alcala, who's still with me 20 years later, went to high school with Brian and Chris, I'm going to introduce you here in a second, was right with me, I'm going to film this. And so he was telling me about when he finally understood what it was to sell the lifestyle. And it was because he ran into a woman at his local fair who said, I love my pond so much, but my daughter loves it even more, and she is, has a lot of problems with ADD. And she sits by that pond for hours on end, and she has every one of those fish named. And it hit him. Like, it hit him in the chest. And right then, he articulated what he has, which was silver and gold. And I couldn't redo Scott, even though I'm emotional like him. I couldn't redo that for anything. So I'm going to post that four-minute clip for you guys to see. Because when you get that, when you understand what it is that we're providing people, then all of this other stuff that we're going to talk about is fantastic to know. And it's good to have the paint-by-the-numbers approach that we have and understand the philosophies. But it really comes from here. This is where... This, this comes from. When I sold ponds as a 21-year-old kid and people asked me what kind of birds get attracted to the ponds, I just said, at my pond, I get cardinals and blue jays and robins at my pond. And then I'd invite them back to my pond. And they saw what I was doing and it was just a manifestation of myself. It was like taking candy from a baby because I got them to buy the lifestyle. I had always rejected kind of the salesman lifestyle pitch because uh, you know, a lot of parental injunctions about salespeople and how they're just out to get your money and that kind of thing and a lot of experiences along the line. And so as you begin to present, we're selling a lifestyle, I thought, mm, okay, uh, I'm selling ponds, man, and they're good. And, but they're not like clothing and they're not like shelter and they're not like food. It, it's an extra, it's really not critical. And then we built a pond for a lady uh, and it was the first one I was hands off on. So uh, I was running an excavator on another job. The guys were finishing up this pond. I went to see it. Now this lady's in her 50s. Her husband's in his 50s, maybe early 60s. Professional people, they work hard. Um, and what I saw when I walked in the backyard was not only a one, a very beautiful pond that, that my crew had completed, but what I saw were these two pieces of very nice patio furniture that had been taken out onto the grass so they could get a full view of the whole feature at one time. And in between those two chairs was a small table. On that table was a bowl with some grapes in it. Next to that bowl was a dish with uh, some crackers and cheese on it and stuck in the ground were these two goblet holders and I saw that she was waiting for him to get home and they were going to sit down and spend time that they would not have spent together. And I realized that the gift that I had given them was time together, quality time together in a serene and tranquil environment where they could connect, where they could unload the very same thing that I do with my pond, only it's my pond so I can't project it. So at that point I realized that I had something of great intrinsic value to give to people. Where do you get that? Where do you get time with your loved one? Where do you get time with your spouse or your child or your grandchild? Where do you get that time? You've got to pull it from somewhere like anything else. And there were so many distractions and I walked away from there realizing that it is a lifestyle and it's a good lifestyle. To give somebody a water feature, you give them so much more than a water feature. And that's where I was able to make the connection in my mind that, oh no, this is a good thing. I get back from Pond College, and uh, this lady meets me on the street at our jazz festival. And she pulls me aside and she says, oh, you have to know this. And I thought, oh, what's wrong with the pond? You know, what's going on? And first thought, negative. And uh, she says, you know, I have a granddaughter uh, who's seven years old, and she's very much attention deficit uh, disorder. She said she has a lot of problems with that. She says, I want you to know I was a little concerned about her being around the pond, but what you have to know is that she went out and sat on that butt rock that you put there on the edge of the pond and she sat there for four hours. 
She made me bring her her lunch out there. All the fish are named. She knows more about the layout of that pond than I probably do. She says, I want to thank you. How good is that? Yeah, that's the lifestyle. Now I get it, okay? Now I get it. Now I get the lifestyle thing, you know? Bowl of grapes, a glass of wine, some crackers and cheese, and two seats for a man and a wife who work their fannies off to sit down and connect a little bit on a nice summer evening with the sound of a brand new pool. Beautiful pool. Man, I got gold to give you. I got gold and silver to give you. You know, and I didn't think I had that to give. I got that to give, I know it. In 1997, a man that we had used in 1995 passed away. And he was a customer I built him upon in 93 or 94. And he was a shop te retired shop teacher and he would help Dave Kelly out. Yet another guy that's still been here 25 years later. Talk about building the team. And Dave Kelly used him for a lot of the tooling and then he would actually rotor out the skimmers uh, and the biofalls back then. Our first year in business of supplying 95. Well, this man died of cancer. He was main contact. I would deal with his wife a little bit. She invited me to the wake and I went to the wake and when I got to the casket, there was a picture of his family and a picture of his pond in the casket. And I can remember that to this day. Like I did that. I gave that guy that. And when you get that, I'm getting emotional like Scott. When you understand what you're providing people, it's a tough time right now. People are losing their jobs. People stuck portfolios are going way down and those guys that are going to bust their butt out there today that I just got breakfast for this morning they're going to make a lot of happy people out there because they're going to open up their ponds and while they're sheltering at home they're going to have something to do and enjoy we have over 400 cleanouts scheduled one person has delayed it they're a stockbroker <laughs> I think they made the economic decision to delay it but the other 400 people want us to come out there and open up their ponds despite on average it being about 1200 bucks that they probably could use right now with the economy, but they still want their ponds opened up. How will ponds sell in the future? Well, it really kind of depends on you. If you have the passion and the energy and you can be a farmer and follow the system and lean in and ask questions and not have an ego and less than the certified hunters that have been there and done that before, you can be successful with this.